Hello, welcome to Pursuit of Perfect System. My name is Terry Ellis. I'm an audio reviewer and a professional Dirac Live calibrator. And thanks very much for joining me. If you're new to the channel, I do hi-fi, headphones, and home cinema reviews, demonstrations, show visits, technical stuff, and all sorts. So if those sound like the types of videos you'd be interested in watching, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Well, the purpose of this video, if you're a regular to the channel, you'll know that several months ago, I made some major changes to my own personal review system from a home cinema point of view. I upgraded it to have Dolby Atmos and I used eight KEF LS50s for surround duties and Dolby Atmos duties. And since then, I haven't really made too many videos about the system because of different reasons, really. And I thought I'd just come on here totally unscripted and just talk to you about the benefits of adding Dolby Atmos how I feel about the system now, was it worth it? You know, did I make the right choice or did I make the right decision uh, using KEF LS50s for surround and Dolby Atmos duties? I think that's really quite an interesting one because I don't think there's many people around the world who have done that. I thought I'd talk to you about the, the kit, the review kit that I use. You know, is that cutting the mustard? Is it good enough? So let's start with why did I even do it in the first place? Why would you even bother adding Dolby Atmos to a, a home cinema system? That's a really interesting one because you know Dolby Atmos has been around for years now, and if you think I only did this upgrade a couple of months ago, you would think someone like me, a you know extreme enthusiast and a reviewer, would want to do this before. And there's a couple of reasons why I didn't. One was because I was concentrating on hi-fi. Really, I did a lot of hi-fi reviews. I spent a lot of my own personal time and money on working on different ways to get my hi-fi system better. I really love love doing that. I think the the challenge of making a hi-fi system better is an amazing one because it's a challenge, you know, it's a really, really hard one. In a different token, getting a home cinema together, I think is a little bit easier. And I think the reason it's easier is for two reasons. One is that we have more speakers. And the more speakers you have, naturally you're less sensitive to things. But I think a bigger one than that is that you often have a whacking great big screen in front of you, which means you've got a visual cue. So your eyes see an image and the sound has to just reinforce that image, obviously with hi-fi, normally what we're looking at, what we're seeing with our eyes is the complete opposite or couldn't be any further from the truth of what we're hearing with our ears, in which case the hi-fi has a really difficult job to try and trick our brains into hearing something you know, completely different to what we're seeing with our eyes, which is probably why people find it easier to listen sometimes with their eyes closed or maybe listen in dark rooms with the lights turned down, which makes perfect sense when you think about it. But the reason I made the changes eventually to Dolby Atmos was I was going out and doing lots of calibrations for customers. And when you do a calibration, you set up a system. You are in full control of it. And that's one of the main reasons why I use Dirac Live. Dirac Live is not a thing. Dirac Live is a tool. It's a, a fantastic calibration or home cinema setup tool that with the right experience and skill, you can work absolute wonders with it and you can totally control the sound presentation that you get from a hi-fi system or a home cinema system when you know what you're doing with it. So I'd had loads of Atmos demonstrations for different systems but when you're listening to a complete system it's very difficult to dissect it and pull it apart and know exactly what is what and quite often when I was getting Atmos demonstrations people was using the Dolby Atmos demo disc four or five or how many years later it is, it's still using that Dolby Atmos demo disc, it's still using the Rain demo. And in a way, I felt disappointed by that fact. It's like, well, surely there must be some films now that really highlight what Dolby Atmos can do. And I think the reason people use that demo disc is because it's more of an obvious thing for having ceiling speakers and what they can do. So all that time I was thinking, oh, really, is Dolby Atmos, is it good? I can imagine it being good in whacking great big rooms or in big full-on cinemas where you've got a huge gap, you know, maybe a, I don't know, 50 foot gap between one set of speakers down one wall and the other set of speakers down the other wall. So with that huge gap, how can you really fill in sound without blasting the people that sit closest to either wall? If you want to fill in the sound in the middle, you need to play the speakers louder on the edges, but then the people sitting closer to those edges get absolutely blasted. Plus seven high ceilings, so you've got big space to have these speakers. But in like a domestic environment with low ceilings, it did always seem like a bit of a gimmick to me, rather than a fundamental improvement in home cinema 
performance. Uh, and I must admit I was completely wrong with that assumption. It's purely because I just hadn't had the right level of experience to realize what Dolby Atmos does. And over a period of time, setting up quite a few different systems, when the sound from the Dolby Atmos speakers wasn't at the correct level, the sound mix sounded like it was missing something. And that was a really interesting and learning curve to me because all of a sudden I realized that having a Dolby Atmos sound presentation, having all the speakers and everything, it's not about having overhead ceiling effects, it's about having more resolution from the system. Once I realized that was what Dolby Atmos did and that was the main benefit of it, I was completely sold and it was just a case of getting things together to be able to do it. And I am denied over the, the, the process and I'm denied over what I was gonna do, what kit was I gonna use, more importantly, what speakers was I going to use because I needed speakers that were gonna match with my Kef reference, speakers that I have at the, now for the front speakers. I wanted ideally to have all the speakers exactly the same because quite often you'll have different speakers for your surround speakers as you will your Dolby Atmos speakers because a lot of people naturally put them in the ceiling. And that's fine and it works fantastically well but this never is gonna be as kind of cohesive as having all identical speakers. So in the end, I chose to go with Kef LS50s, which was quite brave because it meant screwing brackets into the LS50s and hanging them from the ceiling. And I was really apprehensive about doing it, but I thought, oh, you know, sod it, someone's got to do it first. Someone's got to be the first person to take this project on. But was it worth doing? Was it worth all the money, all the effort, all the heartache, all the arguments with my partner, I had her holding the LS50s up in the air for a long time while I was screwing brackets into the ceiling and stuff like that. Was it worth it? 100% yes. Unequivocally, definitely. And the only regret I have is that I didn't do it sooner. That is how much you know I like it. That is how much benefit I think it's brought. But for, again, for that reason, really, it's added an extra layer of resolution and clarity to the review system rather than giving me overhead effects. I always find that overhead effect to be, I don't know, gimmicky really. And you don't necessarily need overhead speakers to get the sensation of something flying over you or going over you. Did I make the right choice choosing Kef LS50s for surround and Dolby Atmos speakers? If I tried out 10 different speakers in this environment, I could let you know which one was the best. Obviously I couldn't do that. I had to just be brave, pick a speaker that I thought I was confident with really, that would deliver the high quality, transparent sound that I was going for. But I have no regrets, actually no regrets at all using the LS50s. I actually think this works out fantastically well. But I can see where there's some potential pitfalls for different people in different circumstances. And I think the big one is room size. My room is pretty small. And in a sense, an LS50 all around you as a surround speaker is actually quite a big speaker, physically quite a big speaker. If you use in-ceiling speakers, they are much, much smaller. If you use in-wall speakers, they're generally big, but obviously they take up less space. Having a lot of Kef LS50s around the room in a small room comes with its challenges. Um, one of the, well, probably the only trade-off and compromise that I made was that the side surround speakers had to be, had to be a lot higher than I originally wanted them. Do I think that's had a massive negative effect on the whole system? I really don't think so. And the reason I don't think so is because the nature of Kef LS50s, the UniQ design, the way they distribute sound, means you've got a very big sweet spot for them. One of the, probably the best things that I've done, and one of the best changes that I've done is having seven surround sound speakers and having the side surround speakers now out really kind of parallel with my ears, that has been a really big thing that I did. Previously, I had only two surround speakers that were on the rear wall, so behind me. And that had a wonderful effect for when sounds are panning from front to back. But quite often there'd be a lot of sound missing and a lot of the sound presence that you get, which you probably don't realize, is coming from your side surrounds. That kind of engulfing sound from, a, from a, an atmosphere point of view a lot of that comes from your side surrounds to fill in the gap. And it obviously makes the, the gap, sonic gap, between the front speakers and your surround speakers much closer, which means, again, when we have panning things, when things come from the front of the screen through to behind you, that transition from a sound point of view is more seamless. And that is definitely one of the benefits of having eight speakers the same, is this transition between 
elements of the sound mix is really, really seamless. But I think more important than that is that you are sitting very much in a sonic bubble with the system and there's nothing really there to pull you out of that bubble. Personally, I think when you set up a home cinema system, you should be right in the middle of the action. You should be right in the middle of it, sitting in a, a sphere or a, like kind of an immersive, literally immersive bubble of sound. So there's sound coming from all around you, but you don't really know where that sound's coming from. You shouldn't be sitting in the middle of 11 speakers. It shouldn't be sound coming from that speaker, sound coming from that speaker. As soon as you hear that there's sound coming from a speaker, the illusion is gone, isn't it? That illusion that you're in the movie or you're in that world that they're, they're trying to create, it's gone and it's broken. I think that's one of the big differences between using the LS50s for surround duties compared to using other home cinema type of speakers. Now, other home cinema types of speakers are fantastic, uh, you know, and they're really, really good for what they do. And I know a lot of home cinema enthusiasts love the speakers that have maybe you know, massive, great big tweeters, or they have arrays of tweeters, maybe three tweeters or four tweeters. It's a different sort of sound presentation from a speaker like that. Naturally, stick three or four tweeters on a, on a speaker, gonna have a more forward and a, maybe a more resolving treble, or maybe a more present treble. To me, that's the one difference between for using Kef LS50s as opposed to using, as I say, your more traditional or typical or maybe purpose-designed home cinema speakers. In a small room, Kef LS50s work fantastic. If you put them in a much bigger room, I think you would possibly lose too much treble detail for them to work as effectively as your traditional or your typical home cinema speakers, which are designed with arrays of tweeters so that you do, do not get the, tr the treble fall off, similar to a line array. I think the other thing to point out is when you're running big bass and big subwoofers, having the cinema type speakers that really push that treble detail on you means that that treble detail is gonna stand up a little better to very big bass systems. So there's a kind of pros and cons to everything. If you get things set right and if you get that right balance, then you can make every system work and every set of speakers work. But what about the rest of my review system? Am I still happy with it? Has it been delivering on what I expect? Well, taking the subwoofers out of the equation because those have been review units, my own personal system that I upgraded, I've been using an Arcan AVR850 AV receiver. That's been powering my Kef 2C center speaker and the four surround LS50 speakers. And then I bought an Arcan P429, which is really a, a Class G dedicated amplifier for Dolby Atmos speakers. And that's been powering the four ceiling speakers for Dolby Atmos. And it's quite interesting that it seems like the P429 has about the same amount of power as the Arcan AVR850. They're like the perfect companions to go together. What I find interesting about the system now, and I push this system hard, really, really hard. I feel like I've pushed that Arcam AVR850 to its absolute limit. And, I'm, and I think my expectations of it are probably a little bit out of kilter for what an AV receiver can deliver. And I think it's borderline. It's been borderline just enough. Now for most normal people without the extreme demands, that I've been placing on my own review system that the AVR850 is gonna deliver probably in excess of what you need. But when you're really trying to push and run things, you know, excessive really levels, um, I think there's only so much uh, an AVR is gonna deliver and then you really need to be looking at a pre and power amplifier combination. I must say the AVR850 for an AV receiver really can deliver an absolutely outstanding performance, but it does have a limit. Power amplifiers have limits, but that limit seems to be less obvious. So I think I'll finish this video just with a little final thoughts, I suppose, on how things have gone. Do I have any regrets taking on the project? Definitely not. Would I have made any changes? If I could do it again, if I could start again, would there be anything that I would do differently? I really don't think so. I'm really happy with everything that I've put in place. I'm really happy with my choice of LS50s, the brackets, the speaker brackets for the wall, speaker brackets that I've used for the scene and everything that I did there has all worked perfectly. I've had no issues, no problems, and certainly no accidents or mishaps. The rack that I've been using from Quadraspire, that has been absolutely perfect. So I've been able to enjoy a lot of films played at very loud volumes. And I don't ever really once remember being pulled out of a movie purely because of 
the surround work or the surround speakers or the mix. And I think if things were wrong, if things were set up badly or if the LS50s wasn't doing a good job, I think I would notice it and that would be bothering me and I'll be thinking I need to make changes. But that is not how I feel. I actually feel really happy with things, really settled with that part of the system. And I think that speaks volumes. I think I'll finish the video with just a couple of comments. Why would you have a home cinema in the first place? Why do you have these big speakers and lots of speakers and subwoofers? It's because I think we are, as home cinema and even hi-fi is the same enthusiasts, we're kind of thrill junkies, aren't we? I can watch a film on a TV. If it's a good film, I'll enjoy it. I can watch a film on my phone and use a pair of headphones. And if it's a good film, I can enjoy it. But it's not the same, it's never ever the same. It's sitting in your chair, your comfy chair, relaxed with this big experience that happens all around you, in front of you, and nowadays above you as well. And it's the experience factor. Most movies nowadays are designed to be experiences. And I think the bulk of that experience comes from the sound. I think probably 80% of the experience, well, I think 50% of that experience comes from the bass, but definitely 80% of the overall movie experience is from the sound. And that's the difference, I think, between watching a film and experiencing it. I really do think that is it, the kind of physical or the visceral experience of it, or the tension or the horror or the fright of it, or even the emotion, just that kind of pull on the heartstring. The sound does all of that. So do I enjoy a film or a movie more when there's great sound? Yeah, I think I do, because I think it's more powerful, it's more impactful. Plus, it's just damn good fun, isn't it? It's just damn good fun. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Thanks very much for watching. Make sure to go and visit our website if you haven't recently. There's always updates and news and stuff going on there. And yeah, subscribe to the channel if you haven't. I'll be seeing you soon. Thanks again. Take care. Bye.